share my screen. Okay, so today we are going to talk about writing and citing with APA 7. Um, I will try to keep an eye on the chat during the presentation. Um, so please feel, feel free to throw questions in there if you have any. Um, and I'll also stop, of course, and ask question, if you have questions as well. I'm really excited about fall, if y'all can't tell by the theme of my presentation here. Um, okay, so this is me. I'm Amy. I am the head of the Research Outreach and Instruction Department in the library. Um, education librarian. I'm a huge fan of APA 7 and I'm awful at selfies. Um, I give you evidence of that. That's really like the best I could do. Um, so, but that's me. That's okay. I'm good at other things. So today we're going to just do a really quick, like super fast refresher on Zotero, like way fast. Um, we're going to talk really quickly about APA 7. I'm going to show you some cool tricks. We're going to talk about creating quick bibliographies and then we're going to talk about um, writing and citing in APA with Zotero. So first of all, I'm going to give you this. I will post a link to this at the end. Please remind me to do that because I'll forget. Um, but this is our link, go.uncg. Actually, I could just type it. Slash Zotero APA. So this will bring you back to the slides if you want to see it later. Of course, I am also recording. Yes. Um, so you will get a copy of this presentation as well. But you can look through the slides if you want to at any point in the future. OK, so Zotero, just real quick. Um, I know we said in the session description that it's ideal if you have some sort of um, familiarity with Zotero. So just kind of throw me a yes or no. like. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say Zotero? Yes or no? Are you familiar? Comfortable? Okay. All right. Well, we'll talk very briefly about Zotero um, before we move on to APA stuff. Okay. So we're getting like 50-50 here. Okay. Super. So Zotero is an open source citation management software program um, that allows you to collect organize, save, and use your resources, books, articles, um, websites, anything that you might need to use as a source, you can put it in Zotero and then use it when you write. Just to know a little bit about the setup, of course, the website is zotero.org. You can go there and create an account. Um, I usually recommend that folks use a non-UNCG email because it's it's open source, so you can take it with you um, when you leave UNCG, so it's easier to reset your password if you still have access to the email account. Um, you can, there's two things that you download when you go to zotero.org slash download. You download the Zotero 5.0 for Windows, that's the desktop part. I'll show you that in a few minutes. And then you also download a browser connector um, that makes putting things into Zotero so much easier. Um, I use Firefox, so I was using Firefox when I went to this page. But there are also browser connectors for Safari, Chrome, and Edge. So I can, I can show you just really quickly how, um, how those work. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty quick and easy download and install. And if you go to this page, there is um, something called a self-guided tour that will walk you through the whole installation process. So it will kind of take you through it at your own pace. Um, and it gives you a lot of detail about how to um, download and install this on your computer. And I'll show you a little bit more about how it looks in a minute. Um, but first, I just want to, let's see, talk to you really quickly, because I know some of you have seen a variation of this presentation. I've been doing it all over the place. So I just want to run through this really quickly. Um, major changes to the seventh edition of APA. So the seventh edition of APA came out last October. Wow, it's almost its one year birthday. I think it came out like the 14th. I should not remember that. Um, I should not admit that I remember that. Um, so it came out almost a year ago. It really isn't that different from the sixth edition, but I think it's better. 
Um, so, you know, some of these things may sound familiar because maybe you've been using it by this point. I think that most, um, most faculty on campus have switched over to the seventh edition. Um, there may be, I know of a few people who are still on the sixth edition, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get to them in time. So just a few things to know. This is about in-text citations. I feel like they're a lot easier than they were in the sixth edition. Um, anytime you have three or more authors, you only list the first one and then at all. Two authors still look the same. These are good place references. I don't know if that means anything to anybody in here except for me, but I had a lot of fun um, imagining um, Chidi and Ellen are writing an article together. Chidi's the first author, obviously. Um, but yeah, so anytime you have three or more authors, this is in your in-text citations, you only list the first author. So that's a pretty big change from the sixth edition, but also I think better and easier. That's really it for in-text citation updates. So the reference list updates, again, I think it's more streamlined. Um, one thing is that you don't have to list the city of publication anymore. Um, in the past, at the end, you had to put like, you know, you had to put like New York colon name of the press, but you don't have to do that anymore. Um, I always had a hard time figuring out what city I should put. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore, so I'm pretty stoked. Um, so now you just need author, year, title of the book, and the publisher. Um, please note, and we'll talk more about this later, that the um, sentence case capitalization still still going. Um, of course, what that means is that article titles and book titles, you treat them as though they were sentences. You always capitalize the first letter, and then after that, you only capitalize proper nouns. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, one kind of change, maybe not for the better, is that you have to list now up to 20 authors in your reference list. Okay, so remember in text, just the first author, but if you have more than 20, 21 or more authors, you list the first 19 and then the last one. So, um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that seems like a lot more work, but in the social sciences, where I imagine many of you are, um, we very rarely have articles with 20 or more authors. So this really doesn't affect our day-to-day -day lives very much. So, um, but still, if you're in the sciences and you see those articles with 30, 40, 50, 60 authors, then you gotta include the first 19 and then the last one, so. Okay, so one other pretty big change is the way that this DOI number looks. So DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. It's a unique identifier for each article. Um, when the sixth edition came out, they wanted them to look like this, this DOI colon, and then the string of numbers and such. About halfway through, they kind of switched their format to look like this, DOI.org, and then that, so it looks more like a website. And, but still in the sixth edition, they said that you could use either one. Well, now in the seventh edition, they want you to use this format, like the, the web link format. Um, these two are for the same article. Like I can tell that by looking at them, but if you don't feel comfortable transforming an old one into the new style, you can go to this website, shortdoi.org, and it will make one for you. Also, I've been experimenting with Zotero some, and it seems like it will actually switch it for you, which is pretty cool. Um, I've only seen it do it a couple times, so I don't know. But basically, if you have a DOI, you should include it, um, and it should look like this with the HTTPS thingy at the beginning. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about Zotero, but does anybody have questions about APA style or APA 7th edition or anything like that before we move on. I do have my handy dandy guide at, at, my, at my elbow where it always is um, when I left my office back in March. I grabbed this as I walked out the door. I've used it countless times since then. One of my five-year-olds has written in it. Don't tell the library because it's a library copy. 
whoops, um, I probably shouldn't have said that. Oh, well. Okay, so no questions yet. No questions about APA or anything. Feel free to throw them in the chat if you do. I need to lull everybody to sleep with my excitement. Is my, is my APA 7 excitement not enough? Like, do I need to, to pump it up a little bit? I really do like it. Um, and one thing that I'll say, just because, again, fangirl, remember, thank you, Ryan, on slide two, APA fangirl. They've done a lot of work with bias-free and inclusive language, um, and you can read about that on their website, um, including things like, um, you know, endorsing the use of the singular they pronoun for people who use they as their pronoun or um, anytime that gender is unknown or irrelevant. Um, they have a lot of things about, you know, how to refer to people of different ethnicities and, um, you know, how to refer to, like, you know, all sorts of things. Um, people first language, all that kind of, it's really great. Also that website, apastyle.apa.org has a lot of um, citation examples, in-text citations. So one thing that I do like about the seventh edition book is that inside, if you can kind of picture, I'm sure that you've all opened a citation style guide before, um, you know, they have all the examples of all the different like bibliography citations, but not so much the in-text citations. So now in this edition for every bibliography example, they have a corresponding in-text citation example. So you can get a good idea of what those are supposed to look like. So there's lots of examples of those on the website as well. So if you have questions, I definitely recommend going there. Hey. Yes. It's Carolyn. Sorry. Um, I have a question. Can you, can you tell me what page number that is in this manual? Because I want to tab it. I want to know exactly which part? where that is. Wait, which part? Um, you said that there's examples of the references or the bibliographies and in text and... Yes. Yeah, so if you start on... Hold on. I know exactly where it is. Hold on. If you start on page... 317, that's where okay. the first one is. But like, if you look on it, so the first one, hold on, I'm gonna have to look at myself again. Okay, cause I wanna show you this on the screen. Okay, there's me. Okay, so this is gonna be awful and probably like not best practice. But okay, so there's an example here of journal article with DOI. Okay, yes. so then there's the in-text citation example and then underneath it, there's a thing that says parenthetical citation uh -huh. um, which is, you know, your in-text citation. And underneath that, there's one that says narrative citation. So that is if you are talking about the author in the text. Um, so it gives you both. The which, author in the text. Okay. Yeah, so if you're like, according to Macaulay and Christensen, and then you put the 2019 right there beside it. So, um, so yeah, so it gives you examples of both, which is really nice. Also, that APA style website does that too. So I don't think the examples are all the same. But it does give you the parenthetical citation and the narrative citation for each example that they give you. So two thumbs up. I, I don't know, like citation for some strange reason. And I sometimes struggle to do in-text citations just because sometimes stuff is weird and, you know, it doesn't look exactly like the examples. So it's nice that they give you examples of both. So thank you. Does, does that help? Okay, cool. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So now let me ooh, go back. Okay. Oh, whoops. I put a slide in the wrong place. Hold on. I got to show you one more thing. I, hold on. I got to show you. Just kidding. I need to reorganize my slides. I don't know what happened. So one other thing just to know, go back to APA, pretend all that other stuff never happened. Um, the words retrieved from don't go in in website URLs anymore. So that's really nice. So you can see here, you got the title of the website and then just straight into the URL, not retrieved from URL. So everybody knows that that's where you got it from. That's why it's in there. So you just don't have to use those words anymore. So that's nice. That's all, sorry about that. Okay, so using Zotero with APA. So I'm gonna go ahead now and open up my Zotero folder, or my Zotero. Okay, so this is Zotero, quick overview. Over here on the left, 
is kind of your organizational structure. It's where you can go in and, um, you know, if you have a paper to write or you have a class that you're collecting information for, you can build a collection and then you can put all the stuff in there that goes along with that, um, which helps you keep your things organized. When you click on one of these collections, you have this um, panel in the middle that lists all the resources that are in there. And then when you click on one of these, the citation information shows up over here on the right. So um, usually, you know, it gives you pretty good information. Um, sometimes websites gives you less good information. Oh, I should show you this really quick for folks who are not familiar with um, Zotero. So the browser connector that I mentioned earlier, so this is it right here kind of lives up here in your little, I don't know what that thing's called, but when you're on any website, it will be able to figure out what kind of site you're, what kind of information you're looking at. So this is a web page. So if I just click on this, it's going to send it over to my Zotero. And that works if you're on um, a website or an article or a, a book in the catalog or anything like that, it will just automatically send it over to, that's the wrong thing, over to your Zotero. So see, there's my thing. It's called UNC Greensboro. Not much to know. I don't know who wrote it. We're just going to leave that out. Um, so yeah, so it's really quick and easy to get references into um, your Zotero library when you use that browser extension. And if you're not familiar with, um, with Zotero yet and you are interested in learning more, interested in getting it installed on your computer, you can either, um, like I said, you can use that guided thing um, or you can reach out to your librarian. If you're in the School of Ed, I'm your librarian. Um, if you're not, I'm not, but I can still help you. Um, or if you wanna know who your librarian is, I can tell you. So, um, so yeah, so this is a very handy way to organize and collect things. And then I'll show you the writing part, which is even better. All right, so I'm gonna click on one of these. I can see here, over here on the right, I've got, it's a journal article. It's got four authors, including Dr. Boyce, who maybe you know. Um, I got the article title, I got the publication, volume and issue number. So all the citation stuff, right? Like this should look familiar as all the information that you'll need when it's time to actually cite this thing. But unfortunately, there's a little problem here with this article title. And that is that it's not in sentence case. Um, and so you may be asking yourself, why, why is it not in sentence case? And that is just because um, since APA is the only citation style that does that, I'm not gonna say it's the only one, it's the only major one that uses that particular convention, it just gets put into the database the other way because that's the way that most people do it. So, but that's okay. Um, there are two, two ways that you can fix this. My favorite way is if you hover over one of these titles, it gives you an option. It says title case or sentence case. So if I click on this, it's gonna automatically decapitalize all my words. The bad news is it decapitalizes all your words. So some, usually there's something that you have to go back in there and fix. Um, I actually found this article that I thought would be fun because it's got a lot of eyes in it. I thought it would be fun to, um, to decapitalize that. So it looks funny. So now it looks like a text message. Um, but still, normally, maybe this is not a great example, it's easier to recapitalize than to do it all manually. So, but you can always also, you're like, okay, I thought I was writing this in APA. It turns out I have to write it in Chicago or whatever. You can switch it back to title case. So that's a nice little trick, especially if you're like a power APA user um, to just quickly take care of that small, fun APA quirk. Um, so yeah, so that's, I mean, you know, one thing to keep in mind, and we'll talk more about this as we go through, 
is that, you know, there will be stuff in here sometimes that you have to fix. Like that's just kind of the way it works. Um, websites in particular, you know, there will be things. It thinks that this is a blog post. I looked at this website, I don't know. Um, but, you know, so I might have to add some information or change some information, but you can always go in and add things in here and then just hit enter and then it's saved automatically. Um, let's see, of course, for those of you who are, are new to Zotero, when you bring in an article or something with um, the full text available in the database, it will bring in the full text automatically. If you are um, doing, you know, using websites, then it will actually bring in like a picture of the website from when you added it to your Zotero library, which can be really nice if you, um, so you can see what it looked like when you were looking at it. Sometimes websites change and it's good to have that sort of permanent copy for, for yourself. And then of course, um, with Zotero, you always have the ability, always have a, to, trying to find an example, here we go, to bring in PDFs that you already have saved on your computer. And most of the time, Zotero will be able to automatically extract all the citation information out of that. So, I think it must have been this one. That was my article. And I just dragged it in from my documents and it automatically found all the citation information and included it. So that's pretty cool, I think. Okay, so now the next thing I want to talk about, really what I kind of want to spend the most time on, is how to use Zotero when you are writing. So my question for you is, what do you use most often, Word or Docs? Because those are the two programs that it works with. Just give me, give me a word in, in the chat, either Word or Docs. We'll see who wins. Well, we got two votes for Word, one vote for Docs. Uh-oh, make your voice heard. Oh. Oh, wow, it's getting close. Three to two. Anybody else? Did we get everybody? Yeah, maybe everybody. Okay. Working Word and copy into Docs. Yeah, okay. Well, let's talk, we'll talk about Word. Honestly, the functions are pretty much the same. Like it works very much the same way. If we have a minute, I can show you really quickly how to, or what it looks like in Docs, but it really does look pretty much the same. All right, let me re share. All right, so now you will see a Word document. And when you download Zotero, if you haven't done so already, make sure that your Word is closed. Because if you don't close it, then sometimes this doesn't install correctly. But what happens when you download Zotero is that it downloads this into your Word document. So if you never noticed it before, it's probably because it hasn't been there. Um, but you can see if you click on that, that you can get some different options here for um, citation stuff. So I, <clears throat> excuse me, Whew. I am going to type a paper about mentoring graduate students. Okay, so now it is time for me to insert an in-text citation. So I'm gonna go to add edit citation. Now the first time I do this, it's going to ask me what my citation style is. So we're talking about APA 7 here. You can see clearly that that's the one I use most often because it just popped right up there. You can see we got lots of other options here though. Um, and actually if you go to manage styles, there's like 9,337 in there the last time I checked. Probably more now. Um, so a lot of styles. These are just the most common ones. So yes, I want APA 7th edition. Okay. so. Here I have two options. I can either type something, my author's name, um, oh, I can't type, um, to bring up, as you can see now, it's bringing up my, ugh, it's hiding behind, now I lost it. There we go. 
Um, so it, it brought that up by just searching, but I can also, if I click on this Z right here, there's something called Classic View. And I actually really like Classic View. This brings up basically a miniature form of your Zotero library. So let's see, I can come here and I'm going to do this one. I'm going to say, okay. I lost it. There we go. Okay, so now I have an in-text citation. Um, so now we have sort of one of those narrative citation situations happening. So I need to insert one of those. So now I'm going to go to citation. I'm going to go back to classic view and see there's the one that I was interested in using, but I've already used the author, right? Because I said, according to Rabe, blah, blah, blah. So I don't need to say the author again, right? Because I've already got that in my sentence. So if I click this box to suppress author, going to give me just the year, which is what I need in this case. So that that's very helpful. Um, really right. Well, on these, I'm very proud of them. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually so if you're writing a literature review, and you're kind of taking one of those broad themes, you can even put multiple sources into one parenthetical citation. So, um, there we go. Okay, so now I have my two sources with the semicolon in between them, which is what is supposed to happen when you have multiple citations in one set of parentheses. Um, and then finally, let's see. Let me find if I have a quotation. Um, I'm just grabbing a sentence from this website. Hold on. Oh, I was afraid it's going to do that. Hold on. You can still use all the weird formatting things that you. There we go. Sure. Okay, so, and then here, let's see, it's a quotation. So I need to add a citation. I need to go to the classic view. This is the citation that I'm using. I'm suppressing the author because I already did it. And since this is a website, I actually need to put a paragraph number and not a page number. I have no idea what paragraph this is. I'm going to say seven, eight. I said eight, because that's what I typed. Um, so this is kind of fancy, right? So I've suppressed the author's name and I've added a paragraph because when you cite an APA and you do a direct quotation, you need author's name, year, and page or paragraph number. So I have no date because I don't actually know when this was written and it's the eighth paragraph. So Zotero will do all of this for you. You just kind of have to know where to look. Um, so, you know, I usually when I do Zotero workshops, I talk about a lot about like, here's how you do all the normal stuff, like insert a normal parenthetical citation with, you know, 
the year and everything, but it does do all the weird stuff too, like suppressing authors, putting multiple authors in one um, parentheses and doing direct quotes. So, and actually that's not right. I should go, anyway, just pretend like I did that right. I think it goes at the end. Okay, so then, of course, the magic, everybody's favorite part, at the end, when we click on Add Edit Bibliography, it builds you a bibliography in APA, in alphabetical order, boom, ready to go. Except, of course, sometimes things are wrong. So, again, we have this article, this first one here, that is not in sentence case capitalization. So the first instinct is to change it in here, but I would actually encourage you not to do that and instead to, to go back to Zotero and fix it over there. So I'm looking at brown. This is going to be kind of a pain to recapitalize, but that's okay. I can handle it. See, they, they just take out all the capitals. So, of course, in this case, you know, we capitalize American Indian. Um, probably should have A and C as one. Um, STEM, we capitalize that because it's always capitalized, and then we capitalize the first word after the colon. So I fix all that over here in Zotero land, and then I go back over to Word, and I hit this button that says refresh. So keep your eye on that first citation because it's going to change in just a second. Okay, there we go. So now it's right. And so the reason that I always recommend doing that is because then if you use this article again, then it's already going to be right, and you're not going to have to remember to fix it again. So I always recommend doing that. Um, I will point out also that, which one of these, I think it was, oh, it was the same one. So it gives you over here, it's got that format of DOI, um, 10.1002, blah, blah, blah. And then over here, it actually transformed it into that DOI.org format, which is really nice. So thank you, Zotero, for doing that. Um, so I, I really, I mean, so like I said, Zotero has been, or APA 7 has been out <clears throat> for about a year. Zotero's added APA 7 to their list about three weeks later. Um, and then we also pay for access to this database called Academic Writer, and it took them 10 months to get theirs updated to the seventh edition. I'm not that mad anymore. Still a little bit mad. Not, not as mad as I was, I don't know, like, April, um, when it still wasn't ready, but still a little mad. So again, you know, like I've got the same sort of issue here in this Jones article. <clears throat> Sorry. But again, I can just come in and quickly update it over there and then refresh it to make it look right. So sometimes things don't, you know, sometimes things don't look quite right and that's fine. Um, like I said before, um, sometimes websites it doesn't do very well with. Sometimes corporate authors, which is not people from corporations, but like University of Washington graduate schools, sometimes, sometimes it might try to do like school comma University of Washington graduate, you know, so it'll try to turn it into a person's name, um, but that is, again, easily fixable in Zotero. Um, and then you can always update your um, refresh it over here to make it correct. So, um, so yeah, so I, you know, I, I think that the Zotero does a lot to help you with your um, citations, both in text and um, your bibliography. Also, oh, I forgot to show you this as well. Um, for some reason, this I don't think works quite as well, but you can also, so let's say that you are writing a paper for a class and your professor says, um, you know, by next week, I need to see five sources. 
If that happens, you can come over to your collection where you've been collecting your resources for this paper. And if you right click on it, it gives you the opportunity to, to create a bibliography. You can also do this if you are like writing an annotated bibliography because those don't work so great in Zotero, but you can come in and just do create bibliography. Again, it's gonna ask you your citation style. I'm gonna save it as an RTF because that's kind of the format that people use for different word processing programs. And then hopefully it will open up. I don't really know where it went. I always forget where it goes. I think it's in let's see my documents. Yep, there it is. So then I'll give you. some weird stuff that it's not supposed to have. Maybe some extra things. I don't know. That's not supposed to be there. That's right. I don't know why I did that, but this is, it's fine. I can get rid of that stuff. Oh, it's telling me that I have a snapshot. Cool, thanks. Um, so it has the retrieve from, and it's not supposed to, but it's not in, okay. Maybe don't do that, just kidding. That wasn't very good. This is, more accurate, but it does still have the retrieve from which page. Hold on. Y'all are probably like, what, what is this person talking about right now? Um, it bums me out how quickly I can do this. I'm really fun at parties. Yeah, I'm going to email um, Zotero about this. They need to fix it because it tells you not to use retrieve from anymore. All right, I'm going to use my librarian powers to get that fixed. Um, but anyway, so if you want to get a quick bibliography, you can, you can do that um, from a collection that you have stuff in. Um, so that can be helpful. Now, this doesn't do the fancy thing where you can refresh it um, because it's just like a outputted document so it doesn't have that cool like connection with Zotero um, but still it's quick and easy and if you if it's got a lot of mistakes in it you can just fix them in Zotero and then just run it again um, and it will it will fix it for you so um, there you go quick and easy somebody had a question yay oh good Brian see Brian came to my workshop last week on Zotero and I'm glad that you are I'm glad that it has been helpful um, like I said I love it I use it all the time for writing and all those other things mostly writing um, all right so real quick I'm just going to show you one more thing I'm going to share again And so I just want to show you docs real quick. Um, same thing happens when you download, it starts showing up in your Google Docs. Um, sometimes it doesn't show up the first time. If you refresh it, it usually just opens up. But if you click on this, you'll see that the options are the same. Come on. Maybe, maybe I need to refresh it. I'll try that for myself and see if it works. There we go. Okay. So the options are you added at citation. That's where you do that in-text citation thing. It works. Again, sometimes it pops up behind my window, which is kind of annoying, but this all looks, should look very familiar to you now. We've got that. We've got the option to go back and forth between like the search view and the classic view. So this is all very much the same. Um, we also have that bibliography, the preferences, if you need to change your citation style, um, you've got this refresh thing. Um, if you need to update, I don't know what switch word processors is, but that sounds like fun. Um, I'll try that later. And then unlink citations, and that's also an option over here in Word that I should have talked about. Um, so, you know, you can maybe guess that like there's a lot of stuff happening kind of behind the scenes between Zotero and Word or Zotero and Google Docs. Um, and so there's like weird Cody stuff in there. I'm not a tech person, as you can probably tell. 
Um, but when you're totally done with your work, what I usually do actually is make another, make a copy of it. And then I hit this button that says unlink citation. So what that does is it breaks the link between Zotero and Word. And I mean, that's good because like if somebody tried to, um, you know, change one of your citations or something, they couldn't because, you know, they don't have that, they, they're not in your Zotero account. So, and sometimes I've never seen this, but it's sort of an urban legend thing that like weird coding will show up. Like if you submit it to your professor, I don't know if that's real, but you can hit this button to unlink citations just to like break that connection. And if there's any weirdness, it will go away. Um, but again, once you do that, you can't do any of these other things anymore. So like definitely make sure you're done. Um, and again, I would recommend making a copy of like a final draft to turn in and keep your kind of working copy um, just in case you need to go back and do revisions later. You'll still be able to add and edit citations in your bibliography. So that is a very quick overview of using APA with Zotero. Um, like I said, I think that if you need more examples of um, APA citation things, uh, the APA style thing is really my favorite. Um, show you what that looks like real quick. They also do have the um, APA style blog which isn't all that active right now. So the APA style blog was sort of like an advice column for APA and it was really helpful. Like, so the sixth edition was around for nine years. And if you think about information, so it came out in 20, it was like 2009, I think. Um, like the way that we access information and like the platforms that we use has changed pretty dramatically since 2009. So it didn't really explain how to like site social media and things like that. So the APA style blog was really helpful for kind of officially updating it in between editions. So it's just a good thing to know about right now. It's not very active because it's still pretty current because it's only been out a year, but it's nice to know about for the future. Um, when we get, you know, people start citing TikTok videos or whatever, I don't think you can probably figure out how to cite a TikTok video. I don't know. Um, but you can see their reference examples. It covers, you know, textual works, data sets, audiovisual and online. So you can get lots of examples of how to say, oh, no, just kidding. There's TikTok right there. There you go. That this is how you cite a TikTok video in case you were wondering. Washington, I don't do have TikTok, do TikTok, but I'm glad to know the Washington Post does. Um, you learn something new every day, don't you? Uh, textual works. And one other thing that I like about this is that, let's pick one at random. It will tell you over here on the side if it's new or revised or the same as the sixth edition. So I kind of like that because I'm like, okay, cool. This is something I really need to pay attention to because it's brand new or it's changed. But then if it's something that's the same, I'm like, it's the same. See, it's been revised from the sixth edition. So um, it's very convenient. So there again, you can see for every like in the corresponding parenthetical citation and also your like narrative thingy. Also tells you what to do um, if stuff is missing, which I really appreciate. <laughs> yeah, this whole section, journal article with missing information. Uh, which is really nice because not everything looks like you like you expect. Sometimes there are things that are missing. So anyway, if you use APA a lot, I definitely recommend bookmarking this on your computer because it is very, very helpful. All right, so that's a great question. Um, yes, the owl is still fine. I'm a little mad at them um, because now they have ads on there and they try to push people to use Chegg which is a citation generator, which is not always accurate. So it kind of makes me mad. Um, but yes, it's fine. It, it is. I just don't, 
push people to it just because I find the ads, it's like they sold out, you know, I don't know. Um, but yes, it's still a fine source. Like the, the AP style page though is like the real official thing, right? So yes, it's fine. Um, it's just not, yeah, I find the ads very distracting. Like right now I have an ad for Geico um, on there. So, but yes, feel free, feel free to use it. Um, and there's, you know, there's lots of great sources out there. I just appreciate that the APA one is like the real legit APA folks. So, all right. So let me look back at my slideshow real quick. Um, so just so you know, since we did spend some time kind of hanging out in Zotero, I just put on this slide, a quick overview of what we talked about. So how to right click on an article to switch to sentence case using the classic view and fixing the errors in Zotero and the naming refresh in Word or Docs. Okay, so that's it. So I just want to put those things in there to remind you if you go back to this later, all the cool stuff we did. But of course you can also watch the recording. That's fine too. All right, so what questions do you have? If any, are there things that you'd like me to talk more about or go back to or no? I have a question. Yes. Um, so with Zotero, um, do you type in all of the citation information or does it retrieve it from the website if you're using like a website or something? It will retrieve it for you. So let me just show you real quick. Um, hold on, let me get to the, I'm going to use the library because I work there and they pay me so I will just show you but you got to use that browser connector so when you download it if you haven't downloaded it yet or if you have downloaded it make sure that you download that connector also because that's the little thing that lives up here makes your life a lot easier um, so let me just go to a database real quick oh, it didn't make me log in yeah you all didn't have to watch me struggle to um, remember my password get out of here I need like five more minutes okay Sorry, my kids just came home. Um, so I can go to one of these articles. My dog knows that my kids are home. Um, and if I just click on this browser extension, browser connector, whatever you call it, um, it will automatically send over to the one that I'm using right now. So this is the one I had opened. It will autom automatically send over the citation information and also, if the full text was over here, which it was, see there's the thing right here that says PDF full text, it sends you over a copy of the PDF as well, or a, yeah, copy of the PDF, sure. So yeah, so it'll do that for you automatically. It also works um, if you already have PDFs on your computer that you've gotten through the library. Um, so this is one that I downloaded from maybe this database, I don't know. And it will be able to go in. Oh, I picked the same one twice. What are the odds? Um, it will be able to go in and get the information that's attached to the PDF. Now, it won't work if like you scan a chapter of a book or um, sometimes if professors post stuff to Canvas, sometimes that all the, all the information that's attached to the PDF doesn't come with it. Um, so then you might have to possibly enter information, um, but I can share some shortcuts. If you ever run into that, just like shoot me an email or whoever your librarian is, um, and we can give you some ideas for shortcuts. Um, the other thing that you can do if you have books, like books in front of you, um, it's me, I can't think of a book. I'm a librarian. This is a book that I just finished. Um, you can go to Amazon. So like this book, I, it's like right there in my kitchen. Um, you can go to Amazon and search for it. It has to be like a book edition. Um, but, in, but see my little, my little Zotero thing, it looks like a book. So that means that it knows that we're looking at a book. So then again, you can click this. Now, it's not going to give you the full text of the book. It's not that magical, but it will give you all the citation information 
um, from Amazon for the book. So yeah, so that's really helpful if you have like a big stack of books that you checked out from the library um, and you don't want to enter citations manually, you can just go to Amazon and search for them there. Um, if you do need to enter something manually, there's this thing up here that says new item and you can come in and say, okay, I'm doing a podcast. Um, I don't know. It's not a title of a podcast, that's a whole podcast, but you can enter in the information there. But also I would recommend just trying to find Google, trying to Google it first and see if you can find the information online somewhere so that you don't have to um, download it. So I don't know if this will work for podcast, but does that answer your question? Oh yes, thank you very much. Awesome, cool. All right, so you may have any other questions. Okay, well, I'm going to put my email in the chat, so feel free to drop me emails if you come up with questions later. Um, also, if you want to schedule an appointment with me to talk through how to do any of this, um, or if you're in School of Ed and I'm your librarian, you can always go to go.unct.edu slash Amy, and um, I can help you with stuff. And I will send you a um, link to this recording tomorrow. Um, I'll also send you a link to the slides. So if you have any questions, you can also feel free to reply to that. So everybody feel good? You feel smarter than you did 55 minutes ago? Yay, good, awesome. All right, well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Please reach out if you have any questions and um, I 